Hey everybody, welcome to Tales of Eldora, a one-on-one D&D live stream with me, Beth Ball, and my husband, Jonathan Ball. Um, we're the two writers behind D&D Duet, and in this game, we are running through a very exciting campaign that um, is taking our wonderful adventure for Gareth across the... <laughs> across hell slash the negative planes and um it's going super well so far no problems whatsoever smooth sailing <laughs> laughs and giggles mm -hmm. yeah um before we get started tonight i have to uh thank our wonderful patrons who make all our video content possible. If you want to check out the cool one-on-one D&D &D rewards that our patrons get, you can go join them over at patreon.com slash Press. And as ever, our stream tonight is sponsored by Hadvarian Heist. Oh, honey, we should have had your new book be the sponsor. I've got it right here. Oh, wait, let me talk about Hadvarian Heist, then you can tell That's everybody okay. about Song of Parting. Hadvarian Heist tells the story of a world of high fantasy, magic, and nature that teeters on the brink between light and darkness. Ancient forces awaken and new heroes rise to the occasion, but this time, can they prevail? Find out. In this second in series novel, packed with druids, pirates, werewolves, and more. Speaking of the and more, you had a big day today, didn't you, honey? I did have a big day today, so joining um, her lovely cohort is Song of Parting, mm -hmm. which is the second novella in the Age of Azuria series. Um, just came out today, so yay! Um, I'm super excited to share um, this one with everybody. If you've read Buried Heroes, Song of Parting tells the backstory basically between Elioth and Teodric. If you haven't, surprise. Um, <laughs> that'll come through pretty, anyway, I don't think that'll be a huge surprise. Um, anyway, it's a really, really fun novella. It also goes like way back in time. And we also hear from one of my favorite side characters and get to know her a little bit better too. Will you show the cover again? Cause I'm obsessed with the cover. Yeah. It's just Ooh, spooky castle it's so on the pretty. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little foreground glow. Good stuff. Yeah. Hey, Doug in Texas. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. And you said Pink Sparkles is here? Pink Sparkles, Zeke is here. Hello. Yeah. We got some friends. We have friends. Honey, um, I think I stole your thunder yes. where I was supposed to do the Hadvarian Heist and then you were supposed to do Patreon. I already did Patreon. Do you want me to jump okay. in to Gareth? That's okay. I think we're ready for Gareth. Um, oh, we had one holdover from our special Valentine's Day session. Gareth, um, did you come up with anything else that you thought about for what you want for Valentine's Day this year? I just want the, the, the warmth of a forge and someone to share it with. Oh... Princess Slobber Chops. Mm hmm You know. That's all I can think of. Anyway. Anyway, last time. <laughs> wait, no. <clears throat> I'm Gareth Stozdak. Here to four a mild banner blacksmith, plying my trade in the walled city of respite when I found out that my son had been taken along with the rest of the holy city of Beacon into the negative plains, drugged there by a nefarious being. Zariel. Through the help of my dear friends, Evelyn and Tessina, one an interplanar agent, a mysterious backgroundery, and Tessina, a witch from the aptly named Witchwood, we descended into the negative plains to begin our search, eventually finding uh, my son Patrick but also, in the meantime, receiving a quest from my god, Vulcan, the Lord of the Forge, to return 
begin to its proper place on the material plane, thus mending the great injustice, the rift that had been rent into righteous um, righteous order or something. In our searching, we have decided to make our way to Tilvane. Tilvane, mm hmm. We've decided to make our way to Tilvane, a city of Nagata, and the search and a search for allies to help us in the next part of our quest. We are flying aboard a crazy mechanical bird construct of intensity. And we encountered a, mm -hmm. what ended up being a sword wraith of some um, nefarious origin. We banished him back to wherever he's from and stole his golden that motorcycle was crazy. before continuing on across the Bloodless Plains. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Bum, bum, bum. Do you care if I pull up our map really fast? Pull it up, honey. Okay. <clears throat> do, do, do. See, I thought this was going to be like a okay. short little jaunt, you know? I thought this was going to be... Because it's only... What is it? It's only 16 feet to Tilvane. So... It's only 16 feet. So it's like the slowest 16 feet of a, a week of travel on your on your magical phoenix bird. Wait, are these buildings and trees not to scale? They uh, are to scale. What? There are like 10 buildings in Tilvane and like 20 trees uh -huh. in the eternal forest. Those are just the biggest ones. Okay. There aren't any other ones. I'm just teasing. Yeah, sorry. I don't... You don't have to apologize. I was just like, ah, oh, we're going to get there like tomorrow. Well, Five look, it's days just a few later. days between Beacon and the Eternal Forest. And I mean, you have made clear that uh, time and space gets a little bit funky on the... They're pretty flexible. Plane, so. Yeah. I think we were soaring through the hot, uh, sulfury air, mm -hmm. uh, and soaring through might be a bit of an exaggeration because our, our somewhat dilapidated mechanical, um, bird is not exactly, you know, a hundred feet up into the sky, more like 10, 12. Yeah. I think between, um, 10 and 20 is about kind of your Phoenix's max. It depends a little bit on the landscape that's underneath you. Do you remember the nature of said dilapidation? Cause I think that's a kind of remaining question. I took very careful notes. Mm -hmm. Um, so parts of the phoenix are really highly wrought. The ornate detail. And, and parts it of it. Like they're just kind of mm -hmm. stuck on with like, he's got like a stovepipe foot. I don't know if it's like stove. It's still like a craftsman, but it's not the same level of craftsmanship. Okay. So it seems like in being repaired, the phoenix has maybe suffered a little bit of um, form over, maybe function over form be the way of, of phrasing it. Um, the other thing you noticed is that its head has been kind of hollowed out. Um, and I spent some time with him. The, the last time we had a long rest, mm -hmm. I, for my watch, was kind of investigating and poking around. Does it seem like a, like a gym goes here? Like a circuit board or like an anvil? Is it shaped in a kind of a funny way? It's pretty, it's a pretty large space. Um, so the, I mean, the head is not small, so you can tell near the top and some of the sides that it looks like there are some connectors missing where there's just like a, um, an open bolt along the side or, um, and then on the top, it looks like there was a more filigree design that's left an impression, but is gone. You also see some just like scratch marks along the inside of the head where it looks like it's been scraped by something. Does it look like it would make for a good cockpit for like a flying cat? 
I think Princess Slower Traps could totally be in there if you wanted. I might float the idea to Princess Slobber Chops just to see how she responds. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, I will be sensitive to defer to her preferences as far as being okay. crammed into the dome of this mechanical bird. I think you pick up from her that she would rather be there than on the motorcycle that Evelyn is currently riding across the bloodless plains. But the mental image of Evelyn she, she'll think about it. driving across the bloodless plains with like some kicking up dust kind of swirling behind her on this uh, golden motorcycle is just. It's so good, right? Is she wearing a helmet in your imagination? I think that she's wearing a cowl like low. Mm, I was trying to figure out how she's keeping the sand out of her eyes. Mm, well, I made her goggles. For riding on top of the mechanical bird. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I forgot about that. So, so she's all set. All set. So we're taking across so thoughtful. the negative plane. Mm-hmm. Um, you stop for you stop for your rest. Um, as you are sorry, I like Whatever is in my eye, I can't figure out. Anyway, you stop for your rest um, following the banishment of the, um, let's see, of Sergeant Shiva from our last session. Um, is there anything you want to do like that day or the next couple? We're going to blaze over a couple days. Um, is there anything that you want to do during that time? There's one thing Any I, conversations you want to have. Yeah. Um, there's one thing I wanted to talk to my witch friend to sentient shadow and kind of keep an eye okay. on this figure whose name I have written down in my extensive Astrid notes that are super detailed. You need a special notebook for our screen. I do. But I'm going to figure that out. Okay, I'm going to get you one. Okay. Um, but I'm kind of trying to keep an eye on Astrid and making sure that Astrid doesn't okay. uh, mess with uh, anything, really. I'm just kind of keeping an eye out. And if I can catch Astrid okay. when she's... I mean, dumb question. But is her shadow always with Tessina? Yes. Okay, so like... But Tessina has like a constantly visible shadow. So Astrid kind of moves with the level of light, but there's always a shadow there. Do Tessina and Astrid... Even at night, there's a shadow. Spend a lot of time talking? Because um, Tessina talks to everybody. Roll a perception check. Yes. Oh yeah, she is nice. She would. She probably would talk to you. <laughs> Perception check. I guess it would help if I have my sheet pulled up. Honey. You're responsible. What can I say? <laughs> Gonna roll a perception check. Buck is going to make sure to keep taking a nap. Good. Perception. That's a 14. Respectable 14. Okay. So you haven't very often heard Tessina talking to Astrid, but sitting next to her for an extended period of time on the back of the Phoenix one day, um, you kind of catch Tessina's side of a conversation um, while Princess Slubberchops is in the head of the Phoenix. And Tessina is just making some observations about um, Evelyn on the, about Evelyn on the motorcycle. Do I overhear what they're saying specifically? Like, is, is Astrid pro or anti-motorcycle? That's... Mm, okay, so you hear Tessina saying, um, yeah, I think that she seems to be pretty comfortable over there. She's just... Her hair's really flipping back and forth and behind the motorcycle, but she seems happy. Astrid, as a longtime denizen of these interesting environs. Have you ever encountered anything like that? Is this just another variant of what we saw back in the Eternal Forest? The Infernal War Machine, but this one just happens to have two wheels? 
Let me roll a, um, let me pull up Astrid really fast too and see, um, how well she's able to help you. I thought I could just get to, oh, sorry, there she is. Alrighty. Um, so it's hard to tell if Astrid is thinking or not being a being a shadow herself. Um, but after a moment, you kind of hear over the whipping wind of the bloodless plains. Mm, well, there are some things that are similar about the motorcycle to the soul-powered vehicles, but it does not need coins, per se. Gareth is thinking to himself that if he'd had something like this, then he wouldn't have had to promise anybody anybody's soul. Would have been nice. He mutters under his breath, and um, he says... Well, th that guy that we kind of sent back to wherever he came, did he bring it with him, or is this a machine of this plane? Hmm. He acquired the machine while here. So it's probably evil. Hmm. He's going to kind of lean towards Astrid and kind of half cover his mouth. Is my, do you think my bird is evil? No, I do not believe that this bird is evil, especially in her former form. This form is neutral as far as I can tell. And the motorcycle is only dangerous for, shall we say, the soul bound to it. Oh, good. So no problem that Evelyn's driving it around. It's dangerous to the soul bound to it. No, it's dangerous because of the soul bound to it. Thank you for the clarification. Are you, you able to, like... Evelyn is not bound to the motorcycle. Right. Are you able to, like, talk to souls and things, like, in your role as a shadow soul? Sometimes. Have you tried talking to the motorcycle? The motorcycle does not have a soul. At least not one that I recognize. But there's a soul bound to it. Yes. You can't talk to that one. He's not here. You might have to draw me a picture, because I don't get it. A green, glowy person who left? Yes. Do you think that he's going to be upset? I think he... Mm, is upset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I think he stays that way. So, Astrid, I've been meaning to ask, what is it exactly mm -hmm. that you want to accomplish? I am here to help you find the sword to free Beacon. I understand that. We, we covered that, but you're just doing this for totally altruistic reasons, right? You don't have any secret hidden agendas or... What kind of hidden agenda would I have? You are being very... A simple yes would have sufficed. Yes. Do I believe her? So I got a little confused in your questioning of Astrid. Um, can you tell me the yes or no question that she just answered yes to? 
So I was asking if Astrid has purely altruistic and no hidden motives for wanting to help us find the sword and bring back Beacon. And she said yes, and I'm wondering if Gareth believes her. You're trying to trick me into letting you roll an insight check. Roll an insight check. The chat thinks that Astrid is sus. I agree. Oh. By the flame of the fort. Oh, don't even need it. 19. So, Gareth, with your very high insight check, you get the sense that Astrid said yes because you bade her to. And in terms of whether she's doing it for purely altruistic motives, your experience of the negative planes leads you to believe that no one is here purely altruistically. Except for us, who are so good and would never do Not anything bad. Not even you. Maybe just Tasina. Princess Slavichops definitely has an agenda. Okay, uh, Gareth will stop chewing that bone and um, we'll keep on flying on. Okay. Kaka! A little okay. silly sizing. <laughs> so, as you continue on, um, Gareth, you stop to rest for the evening. Yes. Oh, um, or stop, stop to rest when you become tired. Um, and as you sleep when you're not on watch, you have a somewhat strange dream. You're not sure if it's from your conversation with Astrid or if it's the golden motorcycle that rests about 20 feet from where you're sleeping. Um, it, you see kind of flickering at the edge of your vision, a green glowing being. But then, just as you're about to like, oh, what is that? The green fades away and grows and morphs into a towering shadow. Am I dreaming or am I on watch? Do I know? You're dreaming. Okay. Um, I think it would be a little unclear in your... I think it would be a little bit unclear inside of your dream, which was happening, um, because it's, it's set in the place where you're camping. Um, can I move, speak normally, do all that stuff in my dream. Mm -hmm. uh, I jump up and ready my weapons and I say, who goes there? At first you don't hear anything and the shadow dissipates. And as it does, you hear a Probably doesn't mean anything. The next day, anything special you want to do? I think we're, uh, nothing springs to mind. If I think of something, I'll let you know. Okay. Night number three on the Bloodless Plains. I think, wait, I would have mentioned, I would have asked everybody else, especially anybody else sleeping near the motorcycles. So, um, apropos of nothing and just you know did anybody have any strange dreams about any towering green shadow darkness figures or anything they laughed threateningly um i dreamt about the green ghost person that we saw but he wasn't shadowy and then i cut off his head nice And nothing bad happened? To me. Let's all just be on the lookout in our dreams. Okay. So does Vulcan send you warnings in your dreams? Um, that has not been my experience. Okay. 
Some of the most direct communication I've gotten from the Lord of the Forge was when I put on that crown of craziness and it was a bunch of cryptic flashes and symbols and it paralyzed me. So Uh. it's not a lot of, it's more of like a sense thing. It's not a lot of, you know, Mm. hey buddy, look out. He doesn't like write notes or anything. Inscribe no. signs in the sky. That no, less helpful. of that. It's more of a sense. Like sometimes I'll be working on something and I'm like, the Lord of the Forge is within me. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's because he lost his land here in the Negative Plains? Ah, uh, run that back for me, Papa. The Vulcan's pride that Alessandra took over. Right. Right, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps I'll be, I'll be closer to him as we go more into the crazy worst parts of the whole Negative Plains. But we're not on a secret mission to reclaim a whole continent or anything. That wasn't my plan. Okay. Well, just let me know. I'll keep I'll keep you up to date if um, Vulcan's like. You gotta reclaim the whole pride. Is that what he sounds like? He doesn't. I don't. Horse? I don't know why I did that voice. I thought it was awesome. I'm working on a voice for Bessie. Is that what you've named the motorcycle? Uh, what do you have so far? Do you want to workshop something with me? Essie is what I've named it. Right, but you said you were working on a voice. I wondered if you wanted to try the voice out. Oh, um, I don't actually have a voice for it, but if something strikes you. I was going to try to make Bessie sound like her dead master, but we'll see how that goes. I think that'd be a really good use for the memory of his voice. You fly along today. Uh, Princess Slobber Chops spends more time in the head of the phoenix. You see her kind of hovering a little bit inside of the head, doing small circles, tapping... You know, the general thing. Sorry, I had a piece of, like, puppy hair. As I was thinking about Princess Slumber Jobs. Piece of puppy hair. Our okay. RPG immersive dog struck. Hey, um, can I see if Tasina can tell me if Princess Slumber Jobs is having just a grand old time? Because I know mm-hmm. that she can talk to animals. Gareth, what do you want me to ask her? Oh, like... Does she see from inside there? She has a better view of things inside the head than I do. She can just, mm-hmm. like, sit inside of it. Any particular markings right. or um, instructions or buttons or hidden levers or anything? Mm, all right, I will ask her. The so Tessina kind of crawls forward, sticks her head in the phoenix head, um, and you hear some, like, loud cat sounds just kind of echoing back to you. Um, behind her, you see Astrid's head kind of poke up out of her shadow and she just shakes it slowly and then she sinks back down. Um, Tessina crawls back out. She said that there are four buttons and she's already pressed all of them and that she maybe found a lever but it was a little bit hard for me to explain what a lever is. And then um she and that was that was like the most sensible thing that she said no yes that's good I'm glad she went ahead and pushed the buttons she she thinks that the heads would look better if we replaced the eyes with gemstones so that it would be shinier in there kind of like a stained glass window Shiny why she knows better. about stained glass windows and not levers I can't tell you it's um, an interesting education 
Okay, we will continue on. You think it's because she lived with a cultist for a while? I'm glad the cultist didn't do anything weird to her, except for teach her about stained glass windows. Fine. Yeah, that's like that's getting out really at the right time. Night number two. Shadow returns. And this time, you feel hot, acrid breath on the back of your neck. I cast Spirit Guardians. Ooh, can you remind us what your Spirit Guardians look like? Yeah, so springing up from sleep as I feel the hot breath on the back of my neck, Gareth whips out his hammer of Vulcan and strikes it across his shield, much like a match across a match box and it sparks fly all the way around the little sparks um animated uh screaming fire flying fire dwarf pixies that swirl around in a little tornado um <laughs> smashing and biting okay a smash and bite and then as one, their heads kind of turn towards you in confusion. Can't find anything. Hmm. So, can I look around and see? Deep inside, you feel oh. a sense of peace at what you've decided to do. That's right. Good work, fire minions. So, I'll just hang out with them for the duration of the concentration spell. Okay. And just try to go back to sleep. Okay. You said you wanted to look around. Do you want to wait till you wake up to do that? Oh, no. He's going to look around in his dream. Kind of poke around. Oh, I got you. Okay. You poke around. You find... Roll a d6. A d6. Okay. Mm. Uh, three... You find three spine devils hiding under the dirt. They pop out as one, and you and your fire pixie dwarves slay them all. Yeah. Wow. It's a good dream. You wake up. You have another kind of drudgery day. Flying the phoenix. I'm assuming as you guys kind of stop that you pause for things. And that night. When you have the dream again. You find footprints surrounding your camp. Okay. So wait, in the dream I find footprints or after I wake up? Mm -hmm. In the dream you find footprints. So same thing, you see the shadow, uh -huh. you feel the breath, you find footprints. So do I, Not if I ones. follow the footprints, where do they go? They walked in a circle around your camp. Oh. And when I'm dreaming, is am I the only one in these dreams? Usually. Or everyone else is asleep and just kind of stays asleep. And does Evelyn continue to have these dreams? She has been continuing to have the dreams about Sergeant Shiva. Um, she's killed him a different way in each one of her dreams. Um, but um, and you've noticed too, Evelyn started to seem like her, she's starting to get kind of circles under her eyes. She's starting to seem more drained, but she's not really talking about it. And last question, these footprints, are they humanoid? Are they like elephant footprints where they're like tree trunks? I think they're more like, yeah, I think elephant footprints is a good guess. Like about this big, maybe, maybe a little bit bigger. As a cloven hoof or is it a hoof at all? There are toes. You mix kind of an elephant and a gorilla. Uh-huh. So Gareth is going to think 
back to his study in the Witchwood, where he specifically spent time in the Demon Anomicon, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Does anything that he saw in that ring any bells to him? Why don't you roll a... Do you think history check? Oh, man, I accidentally popped out the chat. Oh, you did that thing where I can't get to the chat. Uh-huh. Roll a... Um, did I say history check with advantage? You didn't, but I'll take it. Okay. I'm going to try to figure out where I put the chat. How about You're going to have to tell me what it says. How about a spicy 18? Mm. So with your spicy 18, you remember a certain type of fiendish hunter. Mm-hmm. Interesting. A fiendish hunter. Mm-hmm. Do I remember any other details? You know that it is masterful at tracking its prey. Mm -hmm. And that it tends to be employed by very high ranking demon and devil lords. Okay. Okay. Also, while oops, while Gareth thinks about this, um, we're all just gonna like hold on, and I'm gonna hit refresh so that I can get the chat back, so I can see the numbers. Uh oh. And hopefully, it doesn't throw anything off. Oh my goodness. I accidentally did the thing where I like double clicked it, you know. Oh. Oh good. Okay, it's back. Oh good. Okay. Are you still there? And chat yeah. is still here. Everybody's still here. Okay. Sorry. Um, just every once in a while, I click it too many times, and then it disappears. It pops out, and then I can't get it to pop back in. So, um, that's good to know. Uh, I think the next time that we wake up, we're going to have a little powwow with our team. Okay. When you wake up. You guys, we need to have a powwow. What do you, what do you do when you wake up? I look for footprints. You're, suddenly, I was awake. As you stand up, you hear a <laughs> under your feet. As you lift up your foot, you find a crushed rodent skull. One beneath each of your feet. That's probably fine. Is everybody else awake getting camp? around? Everyone's waking up. Okay. But around your camp is a set of footprints. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I'm going to get an Evelyn. Ow. Evelyn. Who was on it? watch? Last. We've all been on watch. Um, Tessina had third watch. Tessina! I rush over to Tessina. Good morning, Gareth. How are you? There's no time! Oh. Come look at this. And I show her the footprints. Did you make these? No. Oh, does my foot look like that? Well, I was really impressed that that's how you made them. You didn't see anything? You didn't hear anything? No. You think these are real? Why wouldn't these it... be real? Maybe the ground did it. You're no help at all. I rush over to Evelyn. She looks really hurt. Evelyn! Uh-oh. Oh, no! Oh, reconnecting, reconnecting. No. There it is. Hi. Okay, there you are. 
That's back. Okay. Reconnecting to the stream. Okay. And... Starting... And... Our internet is the worst. There we go. Yay! Oh my gosh. And now I'm just a gray square. Jack, how is... Yeah, we're back. Oh no. Hey. Hi. Want me to hit refresh on my Discord? No. Okay. Uh... In the constant. Here we go. Here it is. There it is. Boom. Wait, you're the rectangles. There you are. Okay. okay. Evelyn, there's no time. I grab her and I take We're her back. over to the footsteps. Are we back? Is everybody back with uh -huh. us? Oh, good. How long have these been here? I look over at Tessita. Um, they could have come about at any time during the night. It's been pretty dark. And you didn't see anything? You didn't hear anything? You already asked me that. Was Astrid with you the whole time? No, I didn't. My feet do not look like that. Well, I don't know what your feet look Tessina like. Tessina and shadow. Astrid hold up a foot. They hold up their foot. This looks like this. Okay, we need to stop suspecting Astrid. I give a pointed look at Astrid. <laughs> he crosses her arms. Evelyn, I think this is whatever's been visiting us in our dreams. You think that this is Sergeant Shiva? Or something like him, or something tracking us from him. Um, here. Let us all, um, take a small stroll this way. We're going to walk away from the motorcycle and away from the bird. Okay. Gareth is going to try okay. to think about how to separate Astra from the conversation, but decides that there's no time. And okay. away from the motorcycle... Out of the perimeter of the camp, Gareth is going to lean down and say, Hey, everybody, so I think that we should set an ambush. Let's travel today, and then when we stop, let's, the three of us, pretend like we're setting up watch like normal, and then let's try to slip away from the motorcycle and then watch the camp from a hiding place. And then whatever, it seems to be escalating, right? I mean, there's like footprints around our camp tonight. Who knows what's going to happen next? If something happens, the three of us will be ready and we can do something about it or run away. I think that's an amazing plan. Okay. Walking back to the camp. Anyway, it was the strangest thing. Probably nothing to be concerned about. But when I stood up, there were rat skulls under my feet. Ha <laughs> ha. Isn't that hilarious? And we'll, like, pack up. And... Gareth, how did they get there? Oh, it's probably nothing. I don't know. Oh, gosh. Make camp on the fourth night. <laughs> oh, we do out. travel. I thought this was happening like right I thought now. You as said we you were wanted to travel. Back. Oh, you said you wanted to set up an ambush. Yeah. Ta -da, this is where you land the fourth night. So cool. Did it freeze again? Oh, 
we're kind of, we're kind of back. Yes. Oh gosh, everybody's huge. Okay. Sorry, I almost have it set up. You're fine. We just had another internet burp, so. <laughs> it's no good. There we go. Um, let me go grab to see it. Sorry, I was trying to get the token, so yeah. I, I missed the whole thing. You missed the whole freak out. I heard something from your office, but I didn't hear it in here, so I wasn't as worried about it. Well, it's reconnecting again, so I don't know what's going on. Is it because I moved the screen? I'm not sure. It wasn't you know how being, it gets mad? Yeah, it wasn't being so fussy for like weeks, and then we got back into it, and now it's freaking out all the time. Crazy internet shenanigans. What it is. Mm -hmm. um, can I make an ask? So, if uh, we're setting up an ambush, is this kind of the mm -hmm. general location of where our camp is? It's kind of what I was imagining where you like have cover from these things. But if you want it to be somewhere else, then just ignore that little fire. Well, I was wondering if it'd be okay for us to like kind of spread out a little bit. Like maybe Gareth can be close ish to Cena and mm. Princess Slobber Chops can be like on this uh, on or just behind this boulder ready to spring out. Okay. Huh. Evelyn can be wherever she wants to be. Where do you want Evelyn? With Gareth or with Tasina or on her own. That'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. Where do you want the motorcycle to be? Um, let's say. Have... Oh, so are we streaming again? Did we come back? Yeah, we're back. Oh, good. Let's have the motorcycle. It's going to be like, I imagine it kind of like leaned up here-ish. This is the devil motorcycle. Mm -hmm. um, these are supposed Purple to be wheels. Purple is like crazy bright on my monitor. Yeah, it's super bright. I'm going to give it devil horns. Nice. And then where's our bird? Is our bird like... Um, you can have perched the bird on top of this rock. Ooh, yeah. Bird perching. I imagine it kind of like, um, you didn't know this was an art stream. I imagine him kind of like hunched wings over here, right? <laughs> kind of looks mm -hmm. like a trophy. It looks like a cooked turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like good cooked turkey. Yeah, I try to give you this cool phoenix to fly around in, and then it's like. <laughs> oh, that looks cooler. Now it yeah. looks more griffin -y. Okay. Caw! Caw! Okay, so you Get set up your obvious. ambush. Yes, yeah, so we lie in wait. We sneak away as best we can. We lie in wait for any signs of movement or footprints. We're looking for somebody invisible because clearly they can, like, tiptoe around us. Um, okay. And Gareth is going to get ready for... Uh, he's going to be holding... You ready for this? He's going to be hold. Let me make sure I have okay. it. He's going to be holding... Okay. I think he's going to be holding fairy fire. Okay. Have you made any other emergency provisions for running into, for finding something that's invisible? Except for closing my D and D Beyond, I've not made any other preparations. Okay. Um, at the moment, I wanted to look up Tasina's stuff real fast because Gareth doesn't have. Okay. Fine, familiar, like I thought he did. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. DD Beyond is back up. Uh oh. Is this the betrayal roll? Oh, 
I moved the chat out again. <laughs> <sighs> Devastating. I don't understand how that keeps happening. Uh, so We're going to figure this out. I feel so silly. Okay. Get it out. Can I ask you a question? Evelyn doesn't mm -hmm. happen to have fairy fire, does she? Yeah, she totally does. Okay. Can she be the one holding it? Because neither Tessina or Gareth have it. Yes. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. We lie in wait. Yeah, I'm just going to look up fairy fire really fast. Do do. Okay. So you lie in wait. As you lie in wait, I'm going to need con saving throws from everybody. What? To see how alert you are what? able to remain. Con saves. Oh my, con save pulled up this cute little bear icon. Tessina's like with my six. fourth cup of coffee. Just like bouncing around, talking to Princess Lover Chops and Astrid. Mm. Gareth rolled a nine. Okay, Gareth. Um, you fall asleep. No. You will make your perception check roll with disadvantage. So Tessina, kind of really relying on you. Roll a perception check. Gareth, you can roll with disadvantage. Oh, come on, Tessina. Oh, dang. Oh! Evelyn just rolled a 24 and a 25. <laughs> 24 with disadvantage. All right, this is Tessina's roll of a 17. Mm, I see a 9. I thought she rolled with advantage. I. Oh, I thought she rolled with advantage because she that? stayed awake. No, 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 no. No, it's just a regular roll. Okay, so nine for her, eight for me. Good thing Evelyn's here. Okay. Good thing Evelyn is here. Um, let's see. Sorry, let me make sure I'm doing fairy fire the right way. Great. Ready? This is plus seven. Two saves. So you hear Evelyn, ah! and she casts Fairy Fire, like right Whoa. up here to the north of your camp. Okay. Um, outlining this like little shrub and a rock and a tiny boulder. Um, she uses a violet light for fun to go with the motorcycle. <sighs> okay. Mm. And so then a dim light shines in a 10 foot radius. Um, then. Gareth does a, sorry, I forgot my dice in my excitement to like to do our session. So I'm having to roll on D, like on D&D &D Beyond. Oh goodness, Gareth does a 14 hit your um, AC. It does not. Um, Gareth, all of a sudden, after Evelyn has, like, shouted awake, you hear a, Ugh! and this huge orthon 
appears before you. As you see it, all the things you learned about it in the Witchwood come kind of tumbling back. Ah! Um, let me show you what it looks like. Oh, yeah, it's a thon. Gross. Cool. Can't wait to rip so off one of those like... tusks and beat him to death with it! Let me bring... Oops, sorry. Um... Let me grab him. Bring it, you big smelly bastard. Oops. Oh, cool! Oh, he's creeping up on me. Yes. This freaking guy. <sighs> Boo! He pulls his dagger back. Roll initiative! Yeah! All right. Uh huh. Oh, I put a pink spot on Gareth, just in case. Just in case. Gareth gets a gentleman's minus one to his initiative, so that's good. Okay. Tatiana gets a plus two. Woo! Tatiana's ready to go. Good to go. Erlen also rolled an 18. What's Tessina's dex? Tessina's dex is 14. Lovely friend here. Rolled a 22 for his initiative. Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so I borrowed a different, like, borrowed a different oh, token awesome. yeah. than the Orthon one. But yeah, this guy looks super cool, so I think it's okay. The Orthon wishes he looked like this big, sexy minotaur with a giant golden sword. Lots of minotaurs in Tales of Eldora. As opposed to just the number that there are in regular life. Would an adolescent no male minotaur is just fewer. Minotaur be called a cowboy. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Yeah, it was funny. Okay. Thank you, Twitter. Horagar Steel Fist is going to Ooh, fancy take another name. attack against you, Gareth. I, I'm again borrowing somebody else's name, but I thought it was really cool. Gareth, um, okay. as he uh, gets attacked and he like just deflects this first strike, he's going to say to this big gross thing that's attacking him, you know that invisibility doesn't hide your vile stench. So smooth. Thank you. Okay, Thank Gareth, you. does a 25 hit your AC? It does, indeed. <laughs> okay. So you take 11 points of slashing damage. Bring it. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Nah, I'm immune. Con save. Here we go. Mm -hmm. A gentleman's five. That's what I give for crap mm -hmm. talking. 22 uh -huh. points of poison damage. Ooh. That can't You're be You're poisoned right. for one minute. You, you know it doesn't hide even... your stench. Oh my gosh. He just kind of growls over you. No, it doesn't. Chuckles. Um... So you're poisoned for one minute. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your oh. turns, ending the effect on yourself on a success. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, Tusina, your turn. Tusina, you were awake. You saw, you heard Evelyn shout, and the spray of brilliant purple up here to the north up here um and then a giant um caped tusked being appeared out of the darkness um to see is gonna do something awesome obs oh goodness she is going ah 
I should have looked at her spells before. She's going to... Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, mm. so she's going to jump up on top of the stone. Cool, okay. And she's going to say, Don't touch my friends! And shoot this Orthon twice with Eldritch Blast. Awesome. Okay, roll to attack. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's not going to do anything. What'd you roll? I rolled a nat one. Okay. And a two. Oh, a d20 for me for that nat one. Wow. How bad can it get? Let's find out. Fifteen. Okay, you're okay. Jeez, she's going um, to look at her fingers something like... Something about the creature. Um, and it's just like emanating this like sketchy, evil hunter energy. And so um, it's almost like your fingers like wouldn't quite let you point and attack it. Like your body is trying to protect itself against your will. Uh, she thinks that's pretty terrible, so she's going to use the rest of her movement to jump down over here, kind of behind this stump and rock a little bit. Maybe here. Okay. Um, I meant to take out that stump. I missed it. But, yeah, behind the stump works. and the rock. Good. Yeah, and uh, end her turn, I suppose. Poor Gareth. Okay. I know. He's getting rocked. <coughs> Um, okay. <clears throat> Sorry. So, Evelyn. Hmm. Didn't do something awesome. Um. So, wait. Did he get hit by the fairy fire? No. He, um, he made his save. Oh. Okay. So, Evelyn... Um, is just going to kind of like cry out from where she is and she throws her hand up into the air um, and this like roll of thunder boom, 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 and it fills the sky above you all. Um, cloud to cloud lightning zzz, flashes and um, the thing makes a dexterity saving throw. Plus seven. Oh, totally saves. Uh -huh. Um, why are, why are there two things? 17 and three. Do you know what that means? Do um, 3d10 or half damage? I'm pretty is sure. Is it for if, uh, does it do 3d10 if it's storming outside? Or 1d10 if it's not? Or maybe it's for subsequent I attacks. I still casted it. So it's it is three d ten because it's a third level spell, uh, half as much damage on a successful one. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna do half of seventeen because I don't know. Maybe the additional the one on the is for the mean. um, if it's storming. You're right. It has, okay. Like one extra that makes d10. Sense. Hmm. Okay, so it's hit for the first time. Um, yay! Yay! Wait, that didn't do anything. Minus eight. Um, so then, and Evelyn is going to um, come over here by this finger to be able to see you better. And she um, shouts, Gareth, get out of there! He's kind of like peering up at the bird, trying to figure out if you guys should run away or what should happen. And Gareth, it's your turn. DM? Question. Yes. So I am mm -hmm. still learning my character a little bit. And I have this cool tattoo that allows me to mm -hmm. use my reaction to make a melee attack against a creature if I can see it when it attacks me. Okay. Um, 
Uh, can I use that retroactively or is that too silly? How about you save that for this next round? Okay. Probably it's not going to attack me again, though. So I'm what I remember for the future. Yeah, what I'd like to do. Okay, so I'm going to make an attack against okay. this guy. Mm hmm. Bah. Yeah, so I'm gonna. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really. I know what I'm gonna do. Here it is. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. Gonna attack this guy. And then I'm gonna use my bonus action to cast Sanctuary on myself. Okay, so how are you attacking? I'm gonna smack him with my hammer. Okay, uh, roll your attack. Nat 20! A nat 20, y'all! Nat 20! Good job, baby! Thank you! Um... So, do you, roll 20 always does this crazy math that we don't usually use? Uh-huh. So I did 1d8 plus 4 I just damage. just want to see, and if you, okay. What did you roll for your d8? The d8 roll was a whopping 2. So 4 plus four, 4 would be 8. Eight points of magical damage. Yay! Yay! So, and I'm gonna ward my. I'm gonna cast sanctuary on myself. Um. And I'm going to. I'm gonna ward myself. Hmm. And I'm gonna move. Okay. I'm gonna draw him five, ten, fifteen. This tree stump that you're next to is huge, by the way. Yeah. Mm hmm. You can still get on it, but it's like you're gonna be like ten plus feet in the air. Um. How about I move five, ten, fifteen? 20. Is he going to make an attack of opportunity against me? He is going to make an attack of opportunity against you. He has to make a wisdom saving throw Since first. Provided him. Ha. Okay. So he rolls those with advantage. Okay. Oh. Oh, sorry. It, I did it wrong. Take that as the first one. And a five. Uh, so does an 11 save? It doesn't. Ow. Oh. Yeah, Sanctuary actually okay, so did so what happened? Hey, what happens now? So... He... Uh, must choose a new target or lose his attack. So since it was his reaction. Yeah. Okay, so it's his turn? Yep. Want to do anything else? Uh, no, I'm going to see... Does the bike, does the cycle seem to be reacting to the, his presence at all? Well, a perception check. Okay. Come on, buddy. 19... Okay. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be reacting to his presence at all. All right. Okay, that's what I got. Okay, so cool. for his turn, the Orthon, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, um, is going to make his attack against you, Gareth. 
has to roll a wisdom saving throw first. This. Okay. Great. Does a 15 save? Yes. TP hits. Uh -huh. It does a 29 hit. Just barely. Great. Go ahead and make a con saving throw for me. Okay, no problem. Got this. That one. Okay, you take 11 more points of slashing damage and 22 more points of poison damage. Okay. You still up? I'm not telling. Yes, I have one hit point left. That's crazy. He keeps killing me and poisoning me. Everything is terrible. He then turns invisible. Uh, Gareth, choking on his own blood, spits some black ichor out of his mouth and says, <clears throat> What, you had enough? <laughs> okay. Okay. Tessina's turn. Okay, Tessina is going to do something awesome. She is going to... Hmm. Yeah, turning invisible is such a bummer. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, she's gonna cry out to Gareth. Mm -hmm. Um Why are you dying so much? And She is going to, okay, here we go. She's going to rush forward. Okay. It's not something she's done before. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Everything is terrible. I need it's to everything, honey. Feet. She rushes forward. You can't get to within 10 feet. Keep your action. Okay. Never mind then. Um, so she's just going to start shooting. She's going to step forward and shoot a couple of Elders Blasts. Keep you. She rolls these with disadvantage. Hi. Because he's invisible, right? Oh, because he's invisible. Okay. Uh, so 12. And 11. That does not hit. Hi, Annie. Okay. Okay, so it's Evelyn's turn, yes? Yep. I feel so stupid for arbitrarily moving her back, like, two feet. Aw. Sorry. Um, Evelyn is going to cast Healing Word on you at third level. That's nice. So you heal. So too. Oh, no wonder the spells were so weird. I was like, what? What are these? Okay, here we go. I was I was accidentally on Astrid's sheet. Okay. Ooh. You heal eleven. That's nice. 
Hey, I wish you would show me, you know how it used to show us the rolls? I find it really irritating that it's not. Maybe it's because I have it out of the chat box. It's but I like want to make sure it's doing 20? it right. I can see the number, but I want to see like. If you put your mouse over it, it doesn't pop up. Um, but maybe it's because it's out of the thing. It just shows a little question mark. Oh, uh, that's weird. For me, it shows the question mark, and then it shows the roll numbers. Okay, it's probably because it's in its own window. Okay. Evelyn is then going to let me check our cantrip situation. Um, cast frostbite. And dude. So he needs to make a con saving throw. Which he does with advantage. <laughs> okay, so 25 saves. Um... I don't think anything happens if it succeeds. That's kind of confusing. You cause something frost to form. The target must make a con saving throw on a failed save. This happens. Maybe it's just because it's in here. Okay. Bummer. Okay. So not the most helpful round for everybody. Gareth, you have one hit point plus, what, 11? Yeah, 12 I'm, I'm at points. 12, so I'm not even, like, worried about it. Okay. It's your turn. How's this guy looking? He's really, really been messed up, right? He seems, he seems pretty confident. I hate that. Oh okay. man, I forgot I had call lightning just sitting over his head and I could have just done 3d10 damage. <laughs> Hi everybody. <sighs> All right. Um... Gareth is going to. Uh huh. Uh, uh, he's going to say to this guy. Um, he's gonna say to this guy. Um, you make sure you're like looking at the microphone when you're talking to. Me? He's gonna right, say. This, he's fading out. He's gonna say to this guy. Um, I. Sayonara, sucker. And we're gonna try our favorite spell banishment, because that worked last time. Maybe it'll work okay. this time. He needs to roll what? He rolls a charisma saving throw. Okay. So these are plus three. He rolls with advantage. Who does a nine save? A nine doesn't save. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so he has vanished to a harmless demi plane. Vanished with a faint popping noise. Okay. If the target right, is you did it again. to a harmless tibby blade while there it's incapacitated. Remains there until the spell ends, at which point the target reappears in the space it left or in the nearest unoccupied space if that space is occupied. Um, wow. Other, okay, so this is... So he is going to come back if he's from this plane. Gareth is going to try to choke out as much. Um, he's probably going to come back... Let's get in the bird. Evelyn's going to run over and kind of scoop you up. Try to get you into the Phoenix. Tisina, are you helping? Uh, yeah. Gareth has like blood and so I'm poisoned gonna get a... black ichor spilling down his face. Okay, so I would like a dexterity check from Tisina. See how well and how quickly you guys are able to get into this phoenix. Dex straight dexterity? Yes. Or, um, yeah, straight dexterity. She rolled a one for a whopping okay. three. And Gareth, if you will roll one, too. 
I'm poisoned, so I'll roll it with disadvantage. Good. And I have negative one to these. Mm hmm. So I rolled a four. Good. I have, I either roll really well on stream or I roll really terrible. I think in the middle. I think that's good. Okay, so. Um, it takes, let's say, two rounds to get into the Phoenix. Okay. So 12 seconds have passed. Okay. 48 to go. Guys fly away. Gareth's gonna say, did you, to Evelyn, did you leave anything in the motorcycle? Are we just abandoning it? You thought that the thing was connected to the motorcycle. Well, I didn't see it do anything. Okay. One second. Well, I'll hop out of the Phoenix. I didn't tell her to hop out of the Phoenix, though. Gets on the motorcycle. <laughs> Does she really? She doesn't have to. What are you checking? Well, OK, so I was going to. I, 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 I found myself wishing that we'd made a better little plan. I thought it felt pretty good about the fairy fire, but I forgot that Tessina has magic circle. So if we have 48 seconds, then she has all that she needs minus two rounds to cast magic circle around us, which would mm -hmm. make it impossible for homeboy to hurt us. But then I'm reading it and it says, can't enter the circle. It doesn't say that he couldn't like throw poison at us or anything, or, you know, throw its scary knives at us or tusk us, but it just can't enter the circle. So I think that's a bad plan. Okay. So Run what do you up. want to do? Get out of here. Okay. And do you want Evelyn to take the motorcycle? Nah, we're going to leave it. Okay. Seems to be way more He's trouble been focusing on getting you into the Phoenix. So the Phoenix can go, what we what did we say, 40 feet, 50 feet in a round? Uh-huh. OK, do you guys get to um, 400 feet away? Um, roll a perception check. Um, did you say that I ever got to save for my poison situation? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what do I roll for that? Constitution? Yes. Fifteen? Still poisoned. It's going to fade after a minute, so it's just going to fade in just, uh, just okay. like... It's going to fade as you guys uh, go away. Um, and what was your perception check? That's what I was trying to see if I could... if I shook it off or not. So do I roll the perception check with disadvantage? Actually, no, sorry. This is at the end of the minute, so it's gone. So we'll just take the nat 20 that you just had. <laughs> okay. So, Gareth, you feel the... As your spell breaks and the Orthon comes back from being banished. Can I see what it does? <laughs> Can I see what it does? Watch as it takes aim. The sunlight, the, the, you can barely, anyway, barely counts the sunlight, kind of glints off of its brass crossbow. I tell everybody, we've got it coming! Um, and so, let's see. So, you need to make a dexterity saving throw. We're going to use Gareth's dexterity for the Phoenix. How about... Uh, 
a one. Oh my gosh. Oh wait. He had to roll with this event. I need to roll to see if I hit you first. I was like, that was crazy. Sorry. <laughs> Skipped a, a small step. Needs to roll at this advantage. You guys are at the very edge of his range. Okay. We really should have set an, an, an AC for the Phoenix. What do you think? Like 15? 16? Let's do 15, in which case arrow falls just under it. You're able to kind of pull it up out of the way, Gareth. Ha! As the arrow kind of reaches right to where you are, it explodes oh. in twisting, tangling vines, which the phoenix kind of jolts away from. And they, like, reach up to where you guys were. You dart out of the way. You hear a cry of frustration from behind you. And continue on over the bloodless plains. Evelyn, I hope you didn't leave your chapstick or anything in your motorcycle. I keep all my stuff on my person. Are you sad about losing Bessie? You could go back for her if we wanted to, right? I it's suppose. that you look like death. Yes, I... Well, I'd be dead if it wasn't for you. So, thank you. She kind of pats you gently on the shoulder. Ow. Oh. Sorry. I think that's where we're going to pause for tonight. We keep on flying towards Tilvain. Just a little bit more poisoned and a lot bit more hurt and without a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the, that was hunted. the, nah, probably the Orthon is going to leave us alone, right? Yeah. I think that was the longest uh, we've ever had a golden motorcycle in, a, in one of our D&D games, so... Definitely the longest. New high score. I think that's the lesson to have learned. Also, <laughs> the lesson that we learned is that banishment works every time. And it's every probably time. not something that can Nobody be Nobody can save against it. Yeah. I'm just going to leave with that. It's spell end all spells, really. It's yeah. going to be like a town guard that's in the, the way. Bunny pops up. Banishment! Yeah. Town guard's like, uh, you can't go into this warehouse. Banishment. I am this warehouse. That guards sounds great. Home plane is the warehouse. And then he's just on a harmless demi plane. He comes back. I think the Orthon is cool. Yeah. I'm so glad. What a jerk. I wonder who sent him. <laughs> Probably is a rogue agent. Yeah, that makes sense. He can for himself. Thank you, Annie. You're welcome. Did you have fun? I did. I enjoy some little combat. I know. Yeah. And I like I'm fighting so things that I haven't fought before or used before. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever fought or used a Orthon before, so that's cool. Uh, I don't think so either. The... Really cool. I feel like the it's from Mordenkainen's and the art in Mordenkainen's is so cool. And that one's like good, but it hasn't like gripped me the way that the other ones have. But then I was as I was reading about it, the like lore and mechanics around them are really, really cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you, honey. And thank you, our lovely folks hanging out with us in chat. Um, you yeah, make thank it you guys so much. Super fun to play with. Um, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, and thank you to our wonderful, amazing patrons who make all of our video content possible. If you'd be interested in checking out uh, the lovely rewards that our patrons get every month, one-on-one uh, -on -one adventure and all kinds of D&D &D goodies, then you can join them on patreon.com slash groveguardianpress. 
Uh, do us a favor cool. and like and subscribe and follow in all the places, Twitch, YouTube, all that good stuff. And we look forward to seeing you Friday for Tabletop for Two. Yeah, Honey, Friday. what are we... Tabletop for Two this week, we are talking about researching, planning, building encounters. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you, honey. Thank you, friends in chat. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, everybody. You'll have a beautiful night.